Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my humble casa, my humble home in Livingston, Montana. Okay, if you hear a little extra noise, it's because I got a fan going up here. I just got done mowing my lawn, and I'm hot under the collar, to say the least. Okay, <coughs> let me get a little drink of water here. That lawn mowing likes to kill me. I, I hate lawns. Anyway, I got a story from my youth, but this was after Vietnam. I do believe I was buried at the time, and I do believe I was around 27 years old when this happened. And this this story involves alcohol. So if you don't like this kind of storytelling or whatever, I'd be get gone. You know, excuse me, but I, I mean that nicely. I don't want to waste your time. Okay, anyway, I was living down in a place called Burley, Idaho, B-U-R-L-E-Y, one of the potato capitals of the world, down there by Twin Falls, that's where Evil Knievel made his famous he attempt to jump the uh, Snake River Canyon, but anyway, I was living in Burley, Idaho, okay, this friend of mine, I, I had a friend of mine that was living down there from Montana, there was, a, there was a few of us Montanans that went down there to work in the spuds and the potato processing industry and stuff like that. Well, his friend of mine, he wanted to go down to a place called Jackpot, Nevada. You got that? Jackpot, Nevada. You, you guys know where it's at. You all been drinking down there. Sure you have. I'm just kidding. But anyway, his friend of mine's name was Steve. And he, he had this friend of his that I didn't know very good, very well, but he wanted this friend of his to come along too. Three of us in Steve's pickup. Well, this was all well and good, but the, the kid that Steve wanted to tag along, he really wasn't even old enough to drink. He wasn't old enough to be in bars and casinos and gambling places and stuff like that. Because at the time, back in the mid-80s, there was no gambling in Idaho. You had to go down to, the closest place that we could get to was Jackpot, Nevada. Approximately 100, 120 miles to the south, west, southwest of Burley, Idaho, I guess. It's on the other side of Twin Falls, anyway. So, we all pile in Steve's pickup, and away we went. I remember, this was in the afternoon hours, and we go tear it on down there to to uh, Jackpot, Nevada, and we would, there are several main clubs for you guys, some of you people know this, some of you don't, you got the 90, you got the the Horseshoe and the 93 Club, and there's a, you know, it, Jackpot, Nevada has probably only got a, a year-round residence of maybe a couple thousand people, and it only exists mostly for gambling, prostitution, and that kind of stuff. Might as well just be blunt because that's the way it is. But we go down there and we get we 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 get into one of those casinos, okay? And one of the first things I do is I go I go take a five dollar bill or whatever I did, and I got me enough change to play those one arm bandits. Now you guys know what them one arm bandits are. Now, one of them machines where you keep shoving your hard-earned money in and never get anything in return. Ha, ha, ha. You know, you, you, you. Well, that's really the way it works, you know. If you look at the odds on the side of the machine, it says you've got 1 in 23 odds of winning. That's not too good. Well, anyway, I decided that I want to tangle into one of these one-armed bandits. I got me a little handful of nickels or quarters, whatever the hell it was. And, you know, I, of course, I before I started in, I went to the bar, ordered me a drink, because I was a drinking man back in them days. I don't drink now, you know, unlike you folks. I'm just kidding. Don't get mad. Anyway, I set my drink up on the, the one-armed bandit machine. You know, I'm shoving quarters in there, nickels or whatever it was. You know, I'm pulling the handle and two apples had come up in a pair. And I, and I, and this is all I was doing. I'd send that. I just, you know, when things weren't rolling my way, I'd go, damn. 
you know, I, or hell, or, you know, I, I would swear, but nothing, you know, I wasn't yelling, I wasn't jumping up and down, I wasn't, I didn't have a megaphone and was, you know, blasting up, so everybody in the, in Nevada could hear me swearing and all that kind of stuff. You know, like I say, well, I'm sure there was a little, you know, a little stronger language than what I just described, but, that, you know, I was out of frustration, you know, there's a little dam and a hell and a whatever have you. So, on this one in particular coin I put in, all of a sudden I hit a jackpot, but it was only like for five bucks or ten bucks or something like that. A whole bunch of coins fell out, you know, and I go, man, I'm rich, you know. Well, that's kind of what I thought, you know. At least I'm catching up with the money that I, I stuffed in there that I was probably never ever going to get back, you know. So I'm scooping up this money, and I really don't have anywhere to put it, you know, because it's all in coin form and everything. But I'm scooping this up the best I can, and all of a sudden I feel this tap on the shoulder like this, you know. And I turned around, and I'm looking at this really large, fat, pudgy security guard. You know, a guy that needed to lose about 75 pounds? Truthfully, you know, we know the, the fat bulging out between the buttons, you know, one of these kind of guys, you know. And he tapped me on the shoulder and he looked at me and he says, management has advised me or asked me to advise you to leave the premises. And I look at this guy and I said, say what? Yeah, he says, the management has asked me to, to tell you to leave. And I and and instantaneously I got madder than hell. I mean really mad. Because I figured the reason why they were kicking me out is because I won this little tiny jackpot, five, ten bucks, you know. And I looked at this guy, by this time I'm seeing red, you know, and I look at this guy and I said, Look here, fool. I said, You better give me a good reason why you're kicking me out of here, or you're going to lose a couple of teeth, you know. And he says, this is what this, this is a true story. This is what this cat told me. He says, it is against the law to swear. Couldn't believe this. It's against the law to swear in a public place in the state of Nevada. Now, I checked this out later on, and it, it, it was true. You, it, I don't know about now. I don't even care. I don't even go to Nevada. You know, I don't even like the like the place. But th this is what the this is what the dude was telling me. But I'm I'm getting madder by the minute because this ain't making no sense to me. Back in them days, probably every other every third word that come out of my mouth was a swear word. You know, I was kind of a heathen back in them days and all this other stuff. So what I did is I had this handful of nickels or quarters or whatever they were, and I. Because my hands were preoccupied, I couldn't think of anything faster to do, and I just reared back like you were. I mean, I mean, just like I'm a major league baseball player, you know. And I just plastered this guy right in the face with this handful of coins, you know. I mean, I mean, I I really pelted him, you know, knocked his little guard hat off all sideways and. Put little red marks all over his face and everything, man. I know this dude probably felt like he got hit by a shotgun. I'm glad, you know. Okay, by this time, my two friends noticed this fiasco going on, this this, this potential of me going to jail, basically, you know. So they ran over, and one of my friends grabbed me around the chest. One of my friends literally grabbed me right around my legs, and they, they just literally drugged me out of this casino. They go, Jim, you can't do this, man. We we're getting we're getting trouble. Blah blah blah. And all that. You know, and they let's just let's cool off. Let's go across the street. Let's go to this other casino over here. And I says, oh, okay. So we go across the street. And this is no kidding. And it's getting dark by this time, you know. And they had a rock band playing and all this other stuff. So I sat down at the bar, you know, and ordered me a drink, you know. And I'm sitting there, you know, cooling off and whatnot, have you. And we've been in there, like, not very long. Not more than 10 minutes, you know. And all of a sudden, here comes the sheriff. Here comes the sheriff, whatever... Whatever county Jackpot Nevada's in, I, you'll have to look it up because I, I can't remember. 
And this guy was a spitting image of one of your typical sheriffs, you know, with the big belly, the, to the toothpick hanging out of the mouth, the stupid cowboy, cowboy hat on crooked, you know, that kind of a deal, you know, swishing the old toothpick around in his mouth. And he go, and he, he sets down and he says, he says, well, son, I never could figure out why older guys call young guys son. I was no more this guy's son than the man in the moon. He goes, well, son, rolling the toothpick around, his eyes are rolling around. He says, I hear you had a little trouble over there at the horseshoe club. I said, ah, look at here, officer. I never had no trouble. It was that fat pudgy security guard. So I, I told the... <laughs> I told the cop, the officer, what, what had happened, and he, you know, rolls. I, I just love it when cops do this. He kind of rolled his eyes around. That that They're, they're contemplating whether they want to haul you into jail. That's what they're doing when they do that, you know. He kind of started rolling his eyes around and everything, and he goes, well, he says, you look like a nice young man. He says, let me let me give you a little bit of advice here, you know. And he's still he's still got that toothpick rolling around in his mouth and all that stuff. He says, "Look, he says there's three reasons why people come to Jackpot Nevada. There's three main reasons why people come to Jackpot Nevada. The women, i.e., prostitutes or whores, the gambling, or i.e., the drinking, drinking girls or gambling." And I looked right at him and I said, ah, damn, I found me the right place, you know. That's exactly what I told this cop. <laughs> Hot damn, I found me the right place. Because, you know, I'm starting to feel the Jack Daniels. You guys know what I'm talking about. Sure you do. Well, anyway, so the policeman, you know, he got his point across and he left. You know, he just kind of left me alone and everything. Got his point across and whatnot, have you. This is what really killed me, you know. We spent, you know, like an hour, hour and a half in this club, and we decided it's time to go home. Okay, we get, we go, we go outside to the parking lot and all that, and it's plumb dark, man. I mean, it's getting like 10 or 11 o'clock, you know, and we got to drive clear back to Burley, Idaho, another hundred and some odd miles. And here's this old sheriff out there, same old guy, probably the same toothpick, you know, twirling around in his mouth and all this other stuff. And he goes, boys, he says, I got to do something here. I want to line you up and take a look at you. This is just what this old fool said, man. So he lines us all up and he wanted, I guess he was seeing how steady we are. So he goes down the line, looks me in the eye. Of course, he, he already knew me, you know, and looks my buddy Steve, and, you know, up and down, and then looks this kid that wasn't even old enough to drink up and down. He says, okay, boys, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He says, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to haul you down to Winnemucca. That, that's, I guess that was the county seat or where they had that jail or whatever have you, because he'd asked me earlier if I wanted to see the inside of Winnemucca County Jail. I said, no, nah, it's officer, I'm, I'm, I'm real fine here with the, the whores, whiskey, and, and the gambling and all that stuff. But he looks at this young kid that ain't even old enough to be in there drinking. He says, tell you what, he says, I want you driving. I want you driving. And this, this kid... He was probably still playing with things he shouldn't have been if you didn't catch my drift here. So anyway, that's the end of this goofy story. I don't know if you found this any fun or not, but we let this kid drive, you know, and he, I remember old, my friend Steve, he had this, he had this old Ford pickup. I remember it was purple. I think it had a 390 and a four speed in it and this, Young Buck, he could just barely drive that pickup. But we, we get out of town like, I don't know, we probably got about 15 miles out. And then we, you know, Steve got behind the wheel and off we went, you know. But there you are. There's, there's one of my crazy younger drunk, young man drunken stories, if you will. And, uh. Okay, I want you folks to take care of yourselves. I want you to have some fun, smile, 
Uh, what else I got to say? We'll see you on down the trail. And adios, my friends. And where's the stop button so I can get gone? Oh.